I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. When you've got a short in your quadcopter, it can be really difficult to track down. You know a short like when battery positive is connected to battery negative because you screwed up a solder bridge or maybe you uh, burnt out of an ESC or figuring out where it is can involve a lot of tedious trial and error. But there's a systematic way to figure out where the short is that makes it as efficient as possible and I'm going to tell you what it is. Stay tuned. Last night, I finished replacing a burnt ESC on my quadcopter, and when I was done, I needed to plug it into the computer to update the firmware and make sure it was spinning the right direction, and all those things you do when you put a new ESC on a build. And like I always do, whenever I plug a battery in on the bench, I use my smoke stopper. And it's a darn good thing I did, because when I plugged in the battery, the smoke stopper lit up and started blazing full brightness. And that is a sign that there's a problem in the wiring. I immediately unplugged the battery. Now this is not a video about a smoke stopper, but I'm gonna take one second to remind you, this saved me. There was a short somewhere in the quadcopter. I don't know where. That's what I'm gonna tell you about, how to find the short. But if I had not been using this smoke stopper, something would 100% have burned, smoke would have come out, and if I hadn't unplugged the battery, the battery could even have gone off. If you don't have one of these, stop. They tell you in YouTube school, never have people leave your video. Stop this video right now. Go look up how to... Don't watch this video. Go make a smoke stopper right now instead. It's that important. No, don't. Keep watching. Make one afterwards. So the smoke stopper lighting up tells me that I have a short somewhere in my quadcopter's wiring between battery positive and battery negative. Current is flowing freely between them and I cannot fly like that. And that is a real pain in the ass because of the way a quadcopter's wire... Make sure that you have air conditioning running continuously, just kicking in and kicking out anytime you're in a, like a pro grade recording studio. Definitely you want that. You want to be able to hear the air running. Okay, so I have a short somewhere in my quadcopter. It means that somewhere in the wiring, battery positive is connected to battery negative and current is flowing between them and you cannot fly like that. And that is a really sad thing because figuring out where it is is not easy. Let's take a look at a, how quadcopter's wiring is wired and you'll see why. I've got here a diagram of a quadcopter's wiring and we've got the Betaflight F3 which has the built-in PDB, we've got the main battery lead and we've got the ESCs. And, and there's more parts of a quadcopter's wiring than this but this is what we're going to use to demonstrate the concept and frankly if you do have a short between positive and negative it is often the most likely thing that this is it's going to be in somewhere in your PDB and your ESCs. Uh, a damaged ESC could create the short, a damaged PDB, or maybe you screwed up the wiring somewhere. In order to make sure you understand what's really going on here, I'm just going to take the flight controller out of the picture, and I'm going to demonstrate to you how the wiring works inside. Inside the PDB or the flight controller, all of the positive wires are connected together like so. Electrically, you would say they're in parallel. And likewise, all of the negative wires are connected together, right? And so if there's a short somewhere, let's just use this yellow line to indicate a short. So let's say that uh, these wires, maybe the insulation is cut on these wires and they're touching, which means we have a short right here. And what that means is that when current flows, it's gonna come in on the positive lead and then it's gonna go, oh, oh, I got a good path to ground here. It's gonna flow there and back to negative. But I want you to see that regardless of where the short was, the effect is going to be the same. If the, It doesn't matter where exactly I put that, the effect is the same. From the perspective of the battery, current goes in and takes a low resistance path right back to ground. And that means it's pretty hard to tell where the short is. When you measure continuity with your multimeter, so I'm going to use this blue marker to indicate the continuity measurement points. So if I were to measure continuity right here at the battery lead, the, the, the multimeter would beep. It would tell me I had continuity, but it wouldn't tell me anything about where all in here the continuity was. Now the way to track down where the continuity is is basically trial and error. You disconnect one thing. So going back to our example here, let's say that the short is right there between these two leads, right? Uh, if I disconnect them, if I disconnect that ESC from the PDB, 
Then when I test for continuity, now I will not have continuity between positive and ground. And that'll tell me that the short is somewhere in that ESC. But that is a really tedious thing to do, to have to disconnect things one at a time. So it pays to do it in a methodical way that lets you track down the problem as efficiently as possible. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do. So let's imagine that the short that we're dealing with is in this ESC. And that is, in fact, the example I was dealing with last night. The ESC has in some way become damaged such that inside the circuit board of the ESC, positive and negative are joined together. What you're going to do is you're going to start disconnecting just the positive or just the negative lead from one ESC at a time. And I say disconnect just the positive or just the negative because you can see, let's say that uh, I were to disconnect this positive lead. Okay, so now instead of being connected to the ESC, I just desolder it and I leave it laying to the side. Now, when I test continuity here at the, the battery connector, you can see that I will not have continuity because I've broken the circular path back to ground. Okay, and I'm just going to leave these two little markers here indicating that's where I'm testing continuity at the battery lead. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to disconnect one ESC wire at a time. And you can disconnect either positive or negative, whichever is easier for you to get at. You can see that disconnecting either of them would break the path to ground if the path to ground was in the ESC. So I disconnect this wire, I desolder it, but you don't need to do both of them. That's the nice thing. You don't, you don't have to do, so it saves you a little bit of rework. And I test continuity at the XD60 connector. And yep, the short is still there. So then I desolder this guy. The short is still there. So then I desolder this guy. The short is still there. So then I desolder this guy. Now I don't show continuity anymore. And I know that the problem is in that ESC. Now I started by testing the ESCs because the ESCs, well, it's kind of a 50-50 whether the short is going to be in the ESC or the PDB. Sometimes, but it's kind of hard to burn out many PDBs that we're using because they could be rated for 200 amps. And so unless you really smoke them hard, you're not going to, you're not going to damage them. The other thing is that the ESCs are a lot easier to get at, especially if you're using a Betaflight F3, because a Betaflight F3 is kind of a, you have to flip it over to get at the ESC power pad. So desoldering them would be a little bit tedious. So that's why I started working with the ESCs. Let's put the Betaflight F3 back in the picture now that you understand how this is wired up internally. And let's, uh, let's think about a different example. Let's say that instead of the short being in the ESC, the short is between the ESC power wires. So maybe they have rubbed up against your frame in such a way that they have frayed. And maybe the short is not actually between the wires, but maybe it's between uh, battery positive and the actual base plate of the frame, and that's how it's getting back to ground. Well, in that situation, so that, uh, here's what we're going to draw. This ESC is having a short between the positive and the negative wires. In that situation, if I were to disconnect all of the ESC wires from the ESCs, and then I were to test for continuity at the battery lead, you can see that the continuity still exists, right? I haven't broken that path. And that tells me that all of my ESCs are fine and that the short is upstream of the ESCs. So here you can see that I've desoldered the wires from the PDB. I, I saw, and I might even go ahead and solder them back onto the ESCs at that point, just to kind of keep everything neat. We've, you know, we verified that the ESC is not the problem. And you can see that now that I've desoldered the wire from the ESC, I have broken the path. So when I did have continuity from the ESC, but I did not have continuity from the PDB, that tells me that the problem is somewhere between the two in this wiring. If I measure continuity, the battery, battery connector with this wiring, I will not have continuity. And that tells me that one of these wires is the place where the continuity is. And of course, if you desolder the wires one at, time, one at a time, then the one you just desoldered when the continuity goes away is the one that has the problem. We can back that up by then measuring continuity here and here at these pads. And you can see with this wiring, in this location, I will have continuity. And in this location, I will not have continuity. And that, again, will tell me that this wiring is exactly where the continuity error is occurring. 
So there's your methodical way of finding a short on a quadcopter. It's still pretty tedious and involves a lot of manual soldering and desoldering, but there really isn't a better way to do it, at least not that I know of. The, the key takeaways here are, number one, start from like one side of the quadcopter's wiring and work your way out or in. I prefer to start at the ESCs and work my way in toward the battery connector because that's usually, it's oftentimes the ESCs where the problem is and the ESCs are easy to get at. Number two, just desolder. You don't have to desolder both positive and negative. You can just desolder one of them and if there's a short, it'll break the connection. Uh, another thing is that I haven't even talked about this, but always start with a physical inspection. Look for solder balls, solder bridges. Look really closely for frayed wires. Anything that, that is a physical sign, you know, a wire, a, a wire is touching or shorting. Any burnt marks or anything like that. A lot, well, not a lot of the time, but much of the time, some of the time, you can find the problem with a physical inspection and save yourself a lot of trouble. You're still going to desolder to verify with a, with a multimeter that that's where the problem is, but it, it can save you a lot of manual trial and error. Just desolder one thing at a time and test for continuity at the battery connector. And the last thing that you desoldered before the continuity error went away, it's somewhere between those last two steps in the wiring that the, that the error is. Hope that was helpful. Hope it saved you some time the next time you have a short. And always use a smoke stopper every time you plug your quadcopter in on the bench. Every time, you'll save your butt one of these days. It saved mine more than once. Happy flying.